Angela sighed. When another older woman pushed her aside and entered the doctor's office. The woman scolded herself for inaction. She should stand up and don't let anyone go unprompted. But it was obvious that her husband Zahn was right and she had no character. When the office door opened again. Angela was finally going in. But the nurse who came out put up a sign on the door that said 20 minutes off. And Angela sighed again. And now she was sure to be late. And the woman called her manager to remind him. And of course he was annoyed. And shouted at her for a long time. Reminding her again that she had to work. And Angela hung up and leaned wearily in her chair. Thinking how much her life had changed. And how her colleagues looked at her differently at work. Because she was sick more often than she worked. Only her son Nolan always comforted her and helped her forget her illness. And when Angela met Zane. Nolan was only two years old. And Zane proposed to her. Angela was worried about how the child would react. But he was very kind to him. Never raising his voice and often giving gifts. But that was five years ago. And now everything is different. Angela began to fall ill frequently. And as time went on. She realized that her husband was no longer interested in her. And now suspected that she had the most terrible disease. Angela felt everything was bad. And now she needed her husband's support more than ever. And on the way back from the clinic. Angela picked up her son from school. And when she got home. Nolan immediately hid in her room because he couldn't watch his mother cry. And as a result Zond yelled and blamed and blamed his wife. And I had had enough of it. And I wanted a normal wife. Not one that smelled of medicine and was often sick. And Angela tried to calm Zahn down. It seems to her that her husband already has another woman. Who deliberately arranges these scandals to leave home more often. When she really needs his support now. The next day. Angela couldn't stand it. Called Zane and asked him if he would come home today. She tried to explain to her husband how much she needed him now. But she met a wall of momo and rudeness. Angela stopped complaining. It's disgusting to listen to you. Take care of it yourself. Zane said sharply. And then hung up. Angela began to cry again. And after work. Angela went to the hospital to learn about the results of her tests. Her fears were confirmed. And the doctor told her the treatment would take a long time. Possibly a year or more. But he was not sure if she would recover. You and your family will need courage and patience in the coming year. And I believe that in my experience. The success of treatment depends largely on the support of your family. Suddenly, a car honked in front of her. Angela trembled and saw that a man jumped out of the car and ran to hug her. Angela, is that you? It was he, Bruce, her classmate and first love. And to Angela's great regret. He had always regarded her as a friend. So she never told him her feelings. And immediately after the end of the army. He was going to work on the other side of the country. And knowing this. Angela decided to take the initiative. And Bruce became her first man. The nights they had been together. Were the most vivid memories of her unrequited love. Angela. You must now have coffee with me. And tell me how you are doing. Angela said yes with a smile. And she was glad of this unexpected encounter. And when they sat down. Bruce began to talk about himself. For he had been working in the mines to make money. And now he was going to open a jewelry store of his own. And after telling his story. Bruce eagerly asked Angela to tell him about her. There is nothing interesting in my life. I am married and have a son. Angela said a little sadly. You started designing, didn't you? Yes I did. But my husband said it wasn't a profession it was just a mistake. Your husband is foolish. Why you were crying when I saw you? Because of the wind, Angela lied. 
Of course, Bruce didn't believe her. But he decided to get to know her later. He looked at Angela and did not understand what had happened to her. She was always so cheerful. But now she was sitting before him. Her eyes wandering. And she looked much older than her age. They exchanged telephone numbers. And Bruce assured her that they would meet again. When he got home. Zahn scolded her and asked her. Where have you been? I'm sorry, but that's not my business that I have my life. I don't need a sick wife and another man's children, he said irritably. How could such a thing have happened when Angela was crying to her death? Their love was gone. And the woman rushed at Zahn to try to stop him. But he just pushed her roughly. Threw the key to her apartment out. And slammed the door shut. And the key fell right in her face. And a drop of blood spurted out of her wounded eyebrows. And Nolan cried. And Angela held him in her arms. And they all sat on the floor. The boy calmed down a little. Just sobbing. From that moment on. Things got worse. A month on. Money running out at a catastrophic rate. The boss heard Angela was about to take a long sick leave. And promised to find a reason to fire her if she didn't quit herself. But Angela didn't want her friends to be burdened with her problems. So she didn't answer the phone. And she didn't want Bruce to see Nolan. She had her own reasons. No money made Angela think of her grandmother's jewels. And no one knew about them. Not even her husband. Because Angela regarded them as family heirlooms. And followed her mother's instructions. She told her that the jewels were more than 200 years old and had a bloody history. So they had not been worn. But had only been handed down as family heirlooms long ago. And her mother said Angela would only use them in desperate circumstances. And now the moment seemed to have come. And the woman knew that the jewels were expensive. But she did not know the price of it. So she decided to go and find out first. And there was a large jewelry store nearby with pawn shops and workshops. So the woman went there with one of the earrings. Where Angela was immediately escorted to the jeweler. He examined the jewel carefully and looked at Angela with wide eyes. Do you know how old this jewel is? He whispered. About 200 years, Angela whispered. My great-grandmother gave it to me. After learning that Angela still has a second earring, the jeweler asked for a photo of the jewelry, and then announced the amount that Angela could get if she wore the second earring, which was very large. Angela immediately estimated that it would be enough for her and Nolan to live on for one year. A few days later, she would be taken to the hospital, and she was thinking about what to do with Nolan. She didn't immediately notice that there was a man who almost followed her outside the store. He threw himself at her, hit her on the head and took the bag. Angela screamed and ran away. Angela fell to the ground screaming. The driver of a car in the parking lot saw this and hurried to Angela and asked. Are you all right? Angela. Do you remember if anyone knows where you are going today? And why you are going? No, no one. Only your jeweler. Angela told him. She came to the shop yesterday to identify her great-grandmother's ears. Why sell it? Well. We'll talk about that later. Said Bruce. And sent the secretary to their jeweler. But when the man heard that he had had a day off yesterday. And that Angela had just left. He understood everything. And the man ordered his chauffeur to take Angela home. And let her stay at home. And not go anywhere. And not open the door for anyone. He promised to come and talk in the evening. And Angela stayed at home with her son. And Nolan could see that his mother was thinking about something. And crying all the time. But he didn't ask her anything. Unexpectedly. The doorbell rang and Nolan ran to open the door. But Angela suddenly stopped him. 
walked carefully to the door and looked through the peephole. She breathed a sigh of relief. Opened the door. Bruce went in. Looked around the corridor and found that. Nothing had changed in the last eight years. Angela, you need to testify. The jeweler found your earrings. You can pick them up later. Bruce, thank you. We can't live without you now. Angela said she wiped away her tears. Bruce anxiously noticed Angela was crying again. The woman entered the room with the investigator. Bruce saw Nolan laughing into the kitchen with him. And the children also smiled and showed the man their tea and sugar. And my mother wouldn't let me turn on the stove. Even though I knew how. Mom is going to cry again. Does she cry a lot? Yes. Especially after Zahn left us. That's Mom's husband. Bruce frowned and asked why the boy didn't call him Daddy Zahn. Because he is not my father. My father is a good man. My mother used to say the same thing. But he has gone far. He said I was a burden. And other bad things. Bruce almost dropped his cup. And now he knows. Now convinced that something terrible had happened in Angela's life. The desire to clarify everything grew stronger. And after glancing at the empty shelves. Learning from Nolan that his mother was often ill and that they had no money at all. Bruce picked up the boys and they went to the grocery store. When she came back. Angela asked doubtfully. What is this? Bruce looked at the bags of food. You decided not only to starve yourself, but also to starve your children. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you answer the phone? Angela was silent for a moment. And then went to cook dinner. After supper Angela sat opposite her and told him everything. How she had met Zane, how she had fallen ill. And about the betrayal. That she had not concealed the fact that she had no money. That she was going to the hospital soon. That the child had no one to accompany her. That she had no relatives or friends. And that her husband had evicted them all. When she confessed. Bruce was silent for a moment before ordering Angela. In an unobjectionable tone. To pack up and move with Nolan to him. With Bruce having a large house and a housekeeper to take care of the children. At least for the duration of the treatment. Angela wanted to protest. But when she saw that Bruce was so serious. She suddenly couldn't help hugging him. Thank you. Bruce hugged Angela. Thinking that he had always loved her. Even though Angela had always regarded him as a friend. When Angela goes to the hospital. Bruce tries to entertain Nolan. Who misses his mother. At the weekend, they went to the water park. And the child was very happy. They played in the water like children. When Bruce noticed an unusual place on Nolan's shoulder. It looked like a birthmark. What's that, Nolan? Oh, it's a birthmark. Mom said it's the same as Dad's. How old are you? After hearing that the child was eight years old. Bruce was curious and decided to have a good talk with Angela today. When Bruce entered the ward. Angela immediately asked him about Nolan. He will see you later. Angela, we need to talk about what happened. He said with a sullen face. When are you going to tell me everything? You don't love me, so I took a part of you dot and I'm not going to impose it on you. You're a fool, said Bruce, you don't see how much I love you. Angela stared at Bruce in amazement and finally realized how wrong they were. I think we're all fools, she said. And burst into tears of delight. The company where Zahn works is poorly run. Which has a great effect on the salaries of all their employees. But the working situation in this city is so difficult that. There is no need to look for new jobs at all. Yesterday the employees were told. Yesterday, the employees were told that the company has been acquired. And today there will be a meeting to introduce the new owner. Few people are happy with the change of this event. People don't expect any benefits from this woman. 
who holds administrative positions. What they are most worried about is that she will fire all the people. Now Zan sits in the bustling hall waiting for the meeting. And thinking about his life again. The uncertainty that makes him feel tired and frightened. But beyond that. His girlfriend Melania has once again created a scandal for him. The woman mad with jealousy. Her friend's husband bringing her a car while she. The unfortunate person. Has not been given anything from Zahn. He and Melanie had been together for three years. But he thought more and more of Angela. Thinking that perhaps he was too hasty. That he had never done his own laundry and cooking during his marriage. Unlike Angela. Melanie constantly refuses to do housework on the pretext that she is tired. But he lives better with Angela. Thinking about his ex-wife. Zahn thinks she probably died a long time ago. And her son may have been taken to an orphanage. Suddenly Zahn sees a beautiful young woman most likely the new boss. Walking onto the stage. He looks evaluatively at her beautiful figure. Stylish suit and elegant high heels. When he turns his eyes to her face. He can't believe his eyes. This is Angela. At first he thought he was wrong. But when the woman began to speak. He realized that it was her. I can't understand how a sickly woman can become a successful businesswoman. Zahn didn't listen carefully to what Angela said. But he saw people asking her questions and she answered them confidently. After the meeting. He heard from another colleague that they were satisfied with the new management. Zahn couldn't believe it. He went out to smoke and saw that. Angela had said goodbye to her chief engineer and walked to the big white jeep. He stopped her. Zahn, do you still work here? I thought you became a big boss. Zahn looks eagerly at Angela and tries to find words. To suggest she renews their relationship. Suddenly saw the same jeep. But Black drove to the parking lot. Nolan ran out, and Happy completely rushed towards his mother. I need to talk to your mother. Zahn shouted irritably to the boy. Who's here to dictate my son? You're Zahn, aren't you? I've been wanting to see you for a long time. Bruce gritted his teeth and punched Angela's ex-husband on the chin. To write your resignation letter, you should never come here again. The two cars drove out of the gate. Zahn sat in the dust for a long time. Then spat angrily. And he staggered home. Now he has no job and his girlfriend doesn't need him.